Hi, this is Rekha Sharma. I'm Daniel Logan. My name is Sarah Louise Madison. My name is Rob Morgan. Uh, ich bin Joscha Sauer. My name is Ian Bushy. Ich bin Ines. Hello, I'm Bill Hahn. Ich bin der Mario Bühling. I'm Ian Hanmore. I'm Daniel Cudmore. Ich bin Janu von Dani Books. I'm Ian McElhenney. I have been Roger Ashton Griffiths. And you guys are listening to Nerdicismus. 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 Und bis jetzt höre ich noch nicht Nerdicismus im Internet. Aber sobald die Folge mit mir rauskommt, höre ich das natürlich an. Herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge Nerdizismus, dem Podcast für Nerds und Cosplayer. Ich bin Nerdizist Michael und ich habe heute eine ganz besondere Episode für euch. Denn wie ihr vielleicht wisst, sind wir ja öfters im Jahr auf diversen Conventions und Veranstaltungen unterwegs, zu denen typischerweise für die Nerdszene auch meist Zeichner, Autoren oder sehr oft auch Promis aus Film- und Fernsehserien eingeladen sind. Und das Schöne daran ist, dass auch wir meist Gelegenheit dazu bekommen, mit denen ein bisschen zu reden, ein kleines Interview zu führen oder entsprechend mit denen unseren Nerdquiz zu spielen. Ja, und daraus besteht eigentlich heute größtenteils unsere Episode. Denn ich habe euch entsprechend einen kleinen Zusammenschnitt aus den besten und interessantesten Interviews und Nerdquizzes aus dem letzten Jahr zusammengestellt. Und in diesem wunderbaren kleinen Podcast-Paket habe ich beispielsweise ein Interview mit einer Schauspielerin, die in der neuen Star Trek Discovery Serie mitspielt, ein paar deutsche Zeichner und Künstler wie zum Beispiel Joscha Sauer und Heiko Hörnig von der Nicht-Lustig-Cartoon-Serie, eine Schauspielerin aus Doctor Who, ein Schauspieler aus X-Men und Twilight, ein Schauspieler aus Stranger Things und den Marvel-Netflix-Serien und am Ende für alle, die die Interviews nicht in unseren Game of Thrones-Episoden gehört haben, habe ich auch noch einige Darsteller aus Game of Thrones. Bevor ich aber so richtig mit der Episode anfange, ähm, nochmal ein paar kleine Hinweise für alle, die uns vielleicht zum ersten Mal jetzt heute hören. Ihr findet unseren Podcast und unsere zahlreichen Episoden alle unter nerdizismus.de, wo ihr auch die ebenso zahlreichen Links zu unseren Social-Media-Kanälen findet, wie Facebook, Twitter und Instagram. Und ihr könnt uns einfach folgen und keine Episode mehr verpassen, indem ihr uns entweder über iTunes abonniert oder auf unserer Webseite auf diesen schönen großen roten Abonnieren-Button klickt. Dann nämlich öffnet sich idealerweise der Podcatcher eurer Wahl und falls ihr noch keinen Podcatcher bei euch auf dem Gerät habt, werden euch auch ein paar Apps oder Programme dafür empfohlen. Doch jetzt erstmal genug mit dem Vorgeplänkel, denn ihr wollt ja eigentlich die verschiedenen Nerdquizzes hören, die ich mit den Stars geführt habe. Wenn ihr ein bestimmtes überspringen wollt oder ein bestimmtes äh, Nerdquiz direkt reinspringen wollt, könnt ihr das über die Kapitelwahl in dieser Episode machen. Auf nerdizismus.de in dem Eintrag zu dieser Episode habe ich auch nochmal alle, alle aufgelistet und wo ihr die genau findet. Die meisten Aufnahmen, die ihr heute hört, sind in Englisch, weil die Promis natürlich nur dieser, oft nur dieser Sprache mächtig sind. Wir haben leider jetzt keine Untertitel dafür, aber zwischendurch sind auch ein paar Gespräche, ein, zwei Gespräche mit deutschen Zeichnern und Autoren dazwischen. Eigentlich alle Aufnahmen sind in Form unseres kleinen Nerd-Quizzes gemacht worden, denn wir haben meist keinen Bock mit den Promis, so diese Standard-Interviews zu führen, ähm, wo die Standardfragen gestellt werden, die wir natürlich manchmal auch dazwischen haben, aber größtenteils vermeiden wollen. Und so wollen wir die Promis eigentlich immer testen, ob sie selber kleine Nerds sind und stellen denen ein paar knifflige, manchmal kniffligere, manchmal weniger kniffligere Fragen, die sie uns beantworten können und wo wir am Ende immer kleine Geschenke für die dabei haben. Was ihr allerdings heute nicht zu hören bekommt, worauf ihr euch aber in den nächsten Wochen noch freuen könnt, ist das mittlerweile dritte Interview, was ich mit Ian Beatty geführt habe. Das ist der Darsteller von Sir Marin Trent aus Game of Thrones und wie gesagt, ich habe ihn mittlerweile zum dritten Mal getroffen und habe dann ein ganz nettes Gespräch mit ihm auf der Fantastika in Oberhausen geführt. Ihr hört heute in diesem Podcast das zweite, was ich mit ihm auf der Roleplay-Convention in Köln geführt habe. Aber das kommt jetzt irgendwie an dritter oder vierter Stelle in dieser Episode. So, jetzt bin ich aber auch wirklich durch. Ich erzähle euch jetzt nochmal kurz die Reihenfolge, die jetzt gleich folgt. Und dann starten wir auch direkt mit dem ersten Nerd-Quiz. Und erst am Ende dieser Episode werde ich noch ein bisschen was Kleines labern. Ansonsten sind jetzt einfach alle Gespräche hintereinander aufgeführt. 
Als erstes habe ich für euch Rika Sharma. Die kennt ihr vielleicht alle noch aus Battlestar Galactica. Da hat sie die Tori Foster gespielt. In The 100 hat sie auch mitgespielt. Und jetzt demnächst in der neuen Star Trek Serie Discovery, wo sie mir mit, mit mir ein bisschen drüber redet. An zweiter Stelle kommen Joscha Sauer und Heiko Hörnig von den Nicht-Lustig-Cartoons, die ich auf der Comic-Con Stuttgart 2017 getroffen habe. Nerdquiz Nummer 3 ist mit Rob Morgan, dem Officer Powell aus Stranger Things und er hat auch in diversen Marvel-Netflix-Serien mitgespielt. Quiz-Teilnehmer 4 ist Daniel Logan, den viele von euch als den jungen Boba Fett aus Star Wars Episode 2 kennen. Nummer 5 ist ein weiterer Daniel, das ist Daniel Cutmore. Der hat in X-Men 3 den Kolossus gespielt und in der Twilight-Filmreihe den Felix. Und die drei habe ich alle auf der Roleplay-Convention in Köln getroffen. An sechster Stelle folgt ein Gespräch mit Jano Röhler von Danny Books und der in Deutschland zum Beispiel ein Kontakt zu Don Rosa, dem bekannten Disney-Zeichner, ist. Die magische Sieben ist wieder von der Roleplay-Convention in Köln, und zwar Sarah Louise Madison, die in Doctor Who die Weeping Angels gespielt hat. Und noch einmal ein Sprung zur German Comic Con nach Stuttgart, wo ich ein Doppel-Nerd-Quiz mit zwei deutschen Zeichnern gemacht habe, und zwar einmal mit Ines Kort, die Masu Schmieds Tochter gezeichnet hat, und Mario Bühling, der für Katzenfutter Gilet Spritzer verantwortlich war. Und bevor dann nachgelagert der ganze Pulk von Game of Thrones Nerd Quizzes kommt, haben wir Bill Hargreaves, der für Star Wars bei den alten Filmen ein Prop Master war. Den habe ich auf der Sabercon letztes Jahr in Mönchengladbach getroffen. Jo, und wie gerade schon angekündigt, last but not least, noch die Bonusrunde mit vier Nerd Quizzes mit Game of Thrones Darstellern die wir schon in unserer Game of Thrones Reihe hatten, aber die ich als Bonus nochmal hier reingepackt habe. Da wäre zum Beispiel das zweite von insgesamt drei Interviews, die ich schon mit Ian Beatty geführt habe. Dann Roger Ashton Griffith, der den Mace Tyrell dargestellt hat, den Vater von Marjorie Tyrell. Dann Ian McElhinney, der hat den Sir Barristan Selmy gespielt. Und am Ende ein Interview äh, wieder von der Sabercon aus dem letzten Jahr mit Ian Henmore, der den Piat Pri in der zweiten Staffel gespielt hat. Das war einer dieser Priester, der in Carth die Drachen entführt hat. Oh Mann, diese kurze Einführung hat jetzt unglaubliche sechs Minuten, sechseinhalb Minuten gedauert. Um, okay, deshalb halte ich jetzt wirklich meine Klappe und wir starten mit dem ersten Interview mit Reka Sharma. Hey, who are you? I am Reka Sharma, mostly known for Battlestar Galactica, also the 100. Now, that's maybe the biggest thing for our listeners for Star Trek Discovery. That's right. <laughs> Can you tell us anything about it? Anything? Um, I can only tell you what's out there, which is I play Starfleet Commander Landry. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> so you've seen the trailer already? I have. It looks amazing. Yeah. You seen anything beforehand, like uh, a cut episodes or something like that? No, I haven't seen anything. So you actually get to see them when they are on TV? Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, CBS Access. Okay. Is what They don't it's send be you on. any copies or something like that. Oh God, no, no. It, it's all you know. When it airs, we're all going to be really excited to see how it's turned out. Mm -hmm. So after Battlestar Galactica, the second really big sci-fi franchise. And have you been a Star Trek fan before? Yes, I became a Star Trek fan with the original Star Trek when I was a little girl. I was in elementary school. I think maybe grade four or five, I think grade five. And my brother, he's uh, about 10 years older than me. And I used to come home and watch whatever stupid shows were, you know, the kids were watching. And he said one day, he said, I'd like to show you something. It's called Star Trek. And he told me, he said, I know it's kind of old fashioned and it's a little bit cheesy, but it's really cool. So give it a try. He said, look, you see how those doors are opening and closing? There's a guy back there, and there are two people, and they're opening and closing the doors. I said, really? That's cool. So with that, he introduced me to it, and I loved it. I, you know, I thought it was cheesy and hilarious, but also the stories 
really touched me, you know, this sort of envisioning of a future where people were open-minded and people weren't racist and, you know, it was a very idealistic uh, sort of vision of the future. And uh, plus it was just fun and cool with all the gadgets and everything. And so I came home and watched Star Trek reruns almost every day after that. Awesome. <laughs> and now you're actually in it. Now I'm actually in it. It's wild. It must it be. It feels so amazing. Yeah. And okay. I also did a, a web series called Star Trek Continues. Okay. I just shot uh, last year. That was amazing too because they recreated those original sets. And I walked onto this set. And I, you know, it's a fan created thing. So I honestly didn't have very high expectations. Yeah. I had, my whole body had this experience. I started to tear up. It was incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Last year I was in New York and on this uh, intrepid aircraft carrier, mm -hmm. they have like a Star Trek exhibition and they rebuilt an old set there also. Oh yeah, so you and know what I'm talking yes. about. How did you feel when you got oh, on there? It was really otherworldly. I yeah. mean, if you just saw it before and then you're walking on it. Exactly. And now you're actually playing it. It's amazing. And so I hear you would consider yourself a little bit of a nerd yourself. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so maybe you don't have any problems with answering our questions. No, I, I believe everybody's a nerd. Everybody's a nerd about something, whether it's gardening or, you know, animals or space. Nice. So let's jump into the first question. Okay. A lot of people know when Star Trek originally began, like in 1966. Okay. But what year was it cancelled the first time? I don't know these kinds of answers. I mean, is it 1969, is it 1970, or 1971? My guess is 70. It's actually 69. It, what? Cancelled the exact same year? No, 66 it aired. Oh, 66! Yeah. Okay, okay. You know the computer on the Star Trek show? Mm -hmm. The talking computer, and now I have to look for it for myself, because I always forget the shortcut for it but they have a name for it in Next Generation. And is it L-C-A-R-S, is it L-M-A-R-S, or is it C-C-1? I'm guessing. I'm totally guessing. I don't know. It's the first one, L-C-A-R-S, and it's called Library Computer Access Retrieval System. It was going to be my guess, but I thought I'm just making it up. I don't know, but I was going to say the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe something about this convention, because we are on a role play convention. Yes. And there is this term for people who play like in real life, and it's called LARP. LARP? LARP. Okay. And what does LARP stand for? Does it stand for limited action role player, uh, play, low action role play, or live action role play? Live action role, yeah. Pretty easy, right? <laughs> That one's easy. Yeah. <laughs> The rest I failed. But <laughs> so you want some stuff? I w with one answer? Yeah, everybody gets. Uh, Aww, things. you guys are sweet. <laughs> so first thing, some Haribos. Oh. Some Smarties. Smarties. And do you actually know this? No. Is this like a juice? It's like a um, powder you should put in your drink, but all the children in Germany know it because they put it in their mouths and then it wriggles on the tongue. And We had something like that when I was a kid too. And in the end, get this here. All right, I'm getting wasted tonight. What is this? It is a herb oh. liquor from Düsseldorf. Cool. So it's like a like a bitters kind of thing? A little bit. A little sweet, bitter, something in between. I love it. Yeah. This I will I don't know about the rest. Well I'll eat the smarties probably. <laughs> <laughs> But don't put this powder in there. No, 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 That no. sounds terrible. That is really terrible. <laughs> so thank you for taking part in our little quiz. Thank you. We had fun with you. I had fun too. Nerd is this must? Nerd is this must. Hi, this is Rekha Sharma, and you're listening to Nerdicismus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, hi, wer seid ihr? Ich bin Joscha Sauer, Zeichner und Autor von Nicht Lustig Cartoons und jetzt der Nicht Lustig Trickfilmserie. 
Ja, genau. Ich bin Heiko Hörnig. Ich bin auch Autor der nicht lustig Trickfilmserie. Ich bin Autor der nicht lustig. Nein, ich, ich bin, bin ich, Autor. Ich bin auch, ja, ja. ja, jetzt muss ich einfach fragen: Flachwitz hin und her, seid ihr nicht lustig? Naja, nein. Naja. Na ja. Na ja. Nein, was? Nein. Ich nein. habe die Frage nicht verstanden. Seid ihr nicht lustig? Also, ihr habt ja. die, ähm, seid ihr denn Nerds? Also, ich denke, ihr seid Nerds, weil alles. Sonst könnt ihr sowas hier gar nicht machen. Ja, aber, vermutlich. Ja. Wie würdet ihr denn euren Nerd-Faktor von 1 bis 10, wobei 10 das Beste ist, einschätzen? Das Beste oder das Schlimmste? Ich glaube, ich glaube, Heiko muss mal erstmal sehr, sehr hoch sich selbst ansetzen, damit ich ein bisschen drunter bleiben kann. Weil ja gut, dann sage ich, ja. da sag ich mal eine 8 ne? oder 9. Wie viele Shin Godzilla Figuren hast ich du dir gekauft nur diese Woche? Fünf. Nur 5 Shin Godzilla Figuren hat ja. er sich diese Woche gekauft. Große hatte ich. 4, ja. nein 5. Ja. Dann äh, machen wir mal ein Duell daraus, wer ja. am schnellsten die Fragen beantwortet. Easy. Oh, das, Easy. Da werde ich sowas von <lacht> kaputt gehen gleich. Na gut. Wie viele Tetrasteine gibt es? 8. 7. 7, in der Tat. Verdammt. Ganz einfach, welches Bier trinkt man bei den Simpsons? Duff. Gleichstand. Draw. Nenne drei Ur-Ghostbusters. Egan, Winston, äh, äh, Ray. Ja? Ja. ja? ja, das stimmt. Ja? <lacht> was, ist, was ist eine Hypotenuse? So ein Mathematikding. Eine Hypotenuse ist, ich überlege gerade, eine so ein Hypotenuse. Ding, so ein Wellen, nein, so ein, so ein Ding aus der Mathematik. Ich wechsle das gerade mit Tangente, deswegen... Ich weiß es nicht mehr. Längste Seite in einem rechtwinkligen Dreieck. Okay. Ja. Ja. Wer zeichnet die Asterix Comics? Uderzo. Mittlerweile oder nicht früher? Ja, früher. Uderzo. Mittlerweile könnte ich gar nicht die Zeichner sagen, wie die beiden heißen. Habt ihr es? Keine Ahnung. Nö, ich auch nicht. Da wäre ich raus. Und Schätzfrage, wie viele lustige Taschenbücher gibt es? 700. 583. Näher dran, 496 ist okay. es. Okay. Ah, die geheimen lustigen Taschenbücher vergessen. Und letzte Frage, was ist dein Niffler? Ein das was? ist aus Futurama, das ist so ein Ding, so ein, so ein Teil aus Futurama, so ein Tier. Ja, nee, nicht ganz. Ein Haustier aus Futurama, der aber eigentlich... Das ist ein Nippler. <lacht> das ist ein Nippler, genau. Ein, ein Neff, Neffler. Ein Niffler. Ein Niffler. Keine Ahnung. Ein fantastisches Tierwesen. Auch okay. aus, aus Harry Potter. Genau. Ah, okay. Wenn man ein zweiter gewesen. Ihr kriegt, genau. be ihr kriegt beide trotzdem was. Ja. Erstmal, ich glaube, das habt ihr euch beide verdient nach dem Auftritt. Oh, Nummer Schnaps. eins. Oh, schön. Nummer zwei. Schön. Eine kleine Flasche Sojasauce. Ja, so ungefähr. <lacht> äh, Dankeschön. Danke. Killepitsch aus Düsseldorf. Geil. Cool. Vielen Dank. Ja. Und äh, wenn ihr beide an eure Kindheit erinnert oh. werden wollt, jeweils. Müssen wir das auch selber da müssen wir dazu trinken? Ist das so, dass man das in die Augen kippt und. Also, ihr, ihr zwei, wie ihr wollt. So machen wir das. Alle. Genau. Und dann äh, Süßigkeiten werdet ihr sicherlich nicht genug haben. Sorry, dann ich haltet ich mal die Hände auf. Ja, ich glaube, ihr habt euch ganz gut bewiesen. Dankeschön. Ja, mehr als ich, ganz offensichtlich. Ja, ja, genau. richtig, ja. Danke ich euch. Habt noch viel Spaß auf der Comic Con. Ja, auch. Ich, mein Name ist Joscha und bis jetzt höre ich noch nicht Nerdizismus im Internet, aber sobald die Folge mit mir rauskommt, höre ich das natürlich an, weil ich sehr selbstverliebt bin. Ja. Mein Name ist Heiko Hörnig und ich mache genau dasselbe. Ich höre nur die Folgen, in denen ich selber vorkomme von Nerdizismus. Hi, who are you? Hi, my name is Rob Morgan. I play Officer Powell on Stranger Things, and I play Turk Barrett in Marvel universes like Daredevil, Luke Cage, and some others. And then I uh, play on Godless. It's a series coming out on Netflix. I'm John Randall on that, and uh, a couple other things like movies and stuff too. A lot of Netflix stuff. Netflix is my daddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Turk, he can't get a break in any of the shows, right? Turk, Turk is a professional punching bag. He just gets beat up. <laughs> you like playing him? I, I love working. You love I lo working? I love working, period, yeah. <laughs> And would you consider yourself a little bit of a nerd? I'm a, I think I'm a lot of nerd. I'm a sexy nerd, you And know? I focus on my sexy nerd side. <laughs> yes, I'm a nerd. In what areas? I'm a big chess player. I love uh, history. I love uh, art. I love just life, you know. I love learning things. I love expanding my mind. Nice. Yeah. And you know any stuff about sci-fi, Star Trek, Star Wars and so? Not really. Nah, I'm, I'm not that kind of nerd. I'm, I'm more of like the, uh, the, the real, like in life nerd, you know, yeah. like chess, just the things I read, you know, but yes, yeah, I don't even have a TV. I don't. I don't have a TV, so I don't really like watch a lot of shows and stuff. But you can watch them on your mobile or something like oh, that. I can watch them on my computer. Yeah. If I have the time. Yeah. What do you, do you like most? Right now, the show that I just really dig is uh, that show, This Is Us. Okay. I really like This Is Us. I like Black Mirror. Oh, Black Net Mirror is amazing. Yeah, I love Black Mirror. I like uh, Chewing Gum, too. 
Yeah, chewing okay. gum, yeah. Chewing gum on Netflix is fun. And then I watch a lot of documentaries, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, mixed martial arts, I watch that. Yeah. So let's see if you can answer something of my question. <laughs> yeah, let's see what I what I know, man. See if I can win me something. Okay. Who sang the famous Ghostbusters theme? Is it? Ray Parker Jr. Okay, don't have to get you any answers. You already know it. Yeah, Ray Parker Jr. is Ghostbusters. You know Star Trek, the original show. Okay. It started in 1966. Yeah, it was the first show to have like a black female in it too. Yeah. L yeah, yeah. But it was canceled sometime later. Okay. And when was it canceled? In 1969, 1970 or 1971? I want to say 1969. That's true. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they didn't realize what they had on their hands. It was too futuristic for them. You know what I mean? But hey, it's still here now. It, it outlasted a lot of shows. That's true. That was right there at that time, yeah. Actually, the cancellation was considered one of the worst business decisions ever made. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You well, you watch Game of Thrones? Nope. No, no, no. Okay. But ask me anyway. Okay, so I asked you, what is the name of dire wolf? They oh. have like big wolves there. Is it gray wind? Is it white wind? Or is it dark? Gray wind. Gray wind. That's right. Wow, see? I don't even... <laughs> With a little bit of luck. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I got, stuff. what did I get, four out of four? Three out of three, four out of four? Three, three out of three. That's 100%. Yeah. Rekha, what did you get? How many questions did you get right? And you won that? I can't wait to see what I won. You know this one? What's that? You can put it in your mouth and then it prickles on your tongue. Uh-huh. Or you can put it in your drink and drink it. Okay. Get some hungry goes. Okay. But you also get... Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Give me the liquor. <laughs> Give me the liquor. Nah, <laughs> thank you, brother. So I guess you drink alcohol? Uh, I like, I like, like, whiskey. Yeah, okay. scotch, whiskey. I like the dark liquors, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. It's more of the sweet stuff, this one. Okay. I work it in somehow. Nice. And thank you for taking part in our quiz. Wow, thank you for having me, brother. You're really, really good. Oh, thank And you. All right. Hey, what's happening? Rob Morgan from Stranger Things and Marvel Programs. And you're listening to Nerdy Zizmas. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, my brother. Peace, world. Hi, who are you? I'm Daniel Logan. I play the young Boba Fett in Star Wars, The Attack of the Clones, which was the episode two. And then I was also in the Clone Wars. So, uh, yeah, I've been a l quite a bit of Boba in the galaxy of the Star Wars universe. Yeah, you're, you're like a pillar in this uh, Star Wars universe. You know what? Just to be a grain of sand, you live forever. Yeah, that's true. So, I think you you enjoyed your time there. I had a wonderful time. Being 13 years old, I managed to be able to not only get myself on a movie set, but a movie set like Star Wars, you know? And when you look back at that 13-year-old kid, you look at it, he was pretty talented and had a lot of confidence that being almost 30, I look at myself now and maybe I don't have that same charisma confidence that that little 13 year old boy had. So better it's to be young and to don't have any uh, experience, so just to rely on yourself? Well, I think it's just that um, that fact of you, uh, It's I think it's almost ignorance. You know what I mean? You don't realize that that, that kid character, it allows you to be creative, allows you to have an imagination, where as an adult, you kind of look down upon or looked at like, weird because you're being able to pull from so many different uh, imageries and be able to use them in a scene like Star Wars. And then they asked you again to voice Boba Fett on the Clone Wars series? That was amazing man, George Lucas asked me back by name you know and for that opportunity to be again in Star Wars it allowed me to be able to have more blood being pumped back into me especially with the Boba Fett brand and uh, it was an honor just to be able to be a part of Star Wars franchise again if theatrically or in a cartoon like a voiceover. Any chance we hear or see you again in the franchise? Well, you never know, right? You never know where the galaxy of Star Wars goes and what stories they end up telling. But uh, I, I know that Boba Fett's bounties are far from over. He's got a lot of growing to do, and hopefully we get to see more of that. Nice. And would you consider yourself a little bit of a nerd? Yeah, very much a nerd, yeah. I mean, you know, when uh, you go to conventions once, you know, every other month, You're surrounded by people who are in love with the same franchise, right? And it's kind of like a barber at a hair shop. You're eventually going to get a haircut. Yeah. And, you know, coming into the world of not only Star Wars, but these conventions, I became so quickly in love 
where people's love for stories and fantasies like Star Wars. And you have like some uh, super fans who follow you everywhere. Yeah, I got this one guy, Colin. Now, nah, you know what? <laughs> Just to be able to have people who continuously keep supporting you. That's the main thing. And it's unbelievable, but I built a, a fan base of uh, people who actually do consistently keep coming back, you know, and they help me out. And it's, it's, it's shared love because without them, I wouldn't be able to continuously live the lifestyle I have, you yeah. know. And with such a cool character like Boba Fett, I mean, he was in the original, he was like, I don't know, three minutes or something like that. Yeah. And he got such a big fan base. And then you were so lucky to play him in a young version and then later again. I mean, that must be so awesome. You know, I think that's what uh, really goes to tell about what kind of embracement that fans can do to one character. Yeah. You know, when you can embrace a character like Boba Fett that was only in it for like a three minute in all three films, you get to the point where you realize fans have made this character bigger than what he is. And now they want to see him in the new ones. And by God's grace, I ended up becoming that person who got to play him in that movie, you know? So... It was really all about blessing after blessing and just having that right spot at the right time. So let's see how big a Star Wars nerd you really are. I all have right. some questions for you. Probably the easiest one you can tell me. When did Boba Fett first appear? Uh, he first appeared in the holiday special as a cartoon. Actually, that's the second time he appeared. The first time was in Ewoks Tale. No, no. <laughs> was it the newspaper strip? He was on a, on a, on a fair parade. A fair parade? In, in San Anselmo. Ah. It was the home of Lucasfilm that time. And that was actually the first time the character appeared. Nobody knew his name then. Everybody wanted autographs, but nobody knew the, him. And then later he appeared on the Christmas special. So you want to know something crazy? He was actually meant to be the stormtrooper, and they were meant to call him the super trooper, yeah. and it was white Boba Fett. But when Gary Kurtz and the guys at Lucasfilm realized what they had built, they realized the budget and the time constraints to be able to put all these characters like stormtroopers into these costumes, it was never going to work. So they made him the standalone bounty hunter, which made him kind of the iconic one out of all the rest of them when you have Bosk, you, you know, you name them. Yeah. I battled with them on Clone Wars. And at one point he was supposed to be the biggest villain, villain I heard. He is the biggest villain. So, um, but you can probably tell me uh, the rifle of Boba Fett, what it's called. You have three choices. You have the Widowmaker, the Jedi Hunter, or the EE-3 e. carbine rifle. I'm gonna go with C, <laughs> EE. E. Yeah, that's true. And in the end, in what special edition was Boba Fett added in? In episode 4, 5, 6, or all of them? Well, he wasn't in, he wasn't in, in 4. So, uh, added, added in. Added in. In the special editions, see what added in. Oh, in, in, in the new ones? Yeah, no, no, in the special editions of 4, 5, and 6, they added new scenes, and Boba Fett was added in a few oh, scenes. Oh, episode 4? Actually, all of them. I mean, all of them? Yeah. I mean, I mean all of them. I take your answer. <laughs> <laughs> so. You still got a lot of, uh, you still got some right, so. Hey, you know what? It was a team effort. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So you get something to... Yes! Oh! Ahoy! Rossi! Yes! Put it in your mouth and enjoy it. Put it in your mouth. Some Haribos. Oh, right! Some Smarties. Oh, nice! And in the end, if you like it, this one. Thank you so much. What a wonderful time. We are about done. All right. Thank you so much. You are very, very welcome. Nerd is this miss? Yes. Nerd is this miss? I'm Daniel Logan, and you're listening to the best podcast in Germany. Thank you very much. Hey, who are you? Hi, I'm Daniel Cudmore. You might have seen me in movies such as X Men as Colossus, and Halo as Master Chief, and uh, a little film that maybe a few people saw called Twilight, and I play Felix. Did you enjoy the Twilight series? Well, I enjoyed working on them. It's not my kind of genre. I don't typically go for that sort of world, but uh, I had fun playing a vampire ripping kids' heads off. Okay. <laughs> and would you consider yourself a little bit of a nerd? Oh, of course. I play make-believe for a living. Okay. I'm a total nerd. I love it. So besides acting, where are you a nerd in? Uh, I'm a nerd with cars. I'm a nerd because I love watching fun sci-fi style movies. Um, I don't collect comics. 
I don't play video games because I, I uh, can't sit down for longer than an hour. But I think just in the aspect that, that I play make-believe and I use my imagination and I love to live in worlds and see different things and yeah. What's more fun, like acting for a scene or just being a stuntman and blowing up stuff? And so? They're both fun in their different worlds. Um, preparing for a scene and getting ready to shoot something shoots your adrenaline up just as much as jumping off something big doing a stunt. Okay. Yeah. So let's see how big a nerd you are. Uh oh, okay. Got some questions for you. You know the video game World of Warcraft? Yep. It has a lot of expansions that came out, but I got three expansions for, here, for you here, but okay. you have to tell me what isn't an expansion of World of Warcraft. Okay. It's Rage of the Lich King, Cataclysm or Mists of Pandaria. Cataclysm. No, it's actually Rage of the Lich King. Oh. Because the expansion is called Wrath of the Lich King. Ah. You're good. Yeah. You're good. You're gonna make me look bad here, aren't you? No, oh, let's see. You watch Game of Thrones? I do. Okay. So, should I pick a hard question from Game of Thrones? No, be nice no. to me. What is the official title of Sir Davos? Oh, man. Should I give you some answers? Uh, the man that, that can't hold a pen very well because of lack of fingers? No. no. It's the Onion Knight. It's the what? The Onion Knight. Because he has many layers. Because he rescued some people uh, was providing them with onions. Oh, I am doing terribly. Okay, an easier one. Okay. When aired Game of Thrones for the first time? In 2010, in 2011, or 2012? Oh man, I binge watch like five seasons, so I don't know exactly when it came out. Uh, 2012. No, 2011. Well, can't have all the luck, but you get some, uh, you get something. Oh, do I get a consolation prize? Yes, yes, yes. Doo -doo, drum roll. Haribo. Ah, oh, Haribo. Then ah, those things. And fizzy things. A whole boss. You know what to do with that? Put it in a drink? Put it in your mouth and let it trickle on your tongue. Right. And then don't drive any machinery after this? That's true. You might crash? You shouldn't drive any machinery after that. Oh, what is it? It's a herb liquor from Düsseldorf. Kleppitscht. Yes. Interesting. Very cool. So, well, thank you, sir. Thank you. I tried. You get some questions right, so why not? Right. Yep. All right. So we'll thank you. That. Thank you again. Hi there. This is Daniel Cudmore, and you can see me in a few movies such as X-Men and Twilight, and you are listening to Nerdismos. Thank you very much. Something like that. Hallo. Hallo. Wen haben wir denn hier? Ich bin Janno von Danibooks, der Verleger und Besitzer und so ziemlich alles Macher bei dem Comicverlag Danibooks. Und auch in Deutschland bekannt als guter Freund von Don Rosa. Äh, ja, also ich mache die, äh, ich betreue die Don Rosa Veröffentlichung redaktionell für Egmont und habe auch die Geschichten alle komplett neu übersetzt für die neuen Veröffentlichungen. Okay, da du deinen eigenen Verlag hast und da du auch viel im Comic-Geschäft zu tun hast, will ich davon mal ausgehen, dass du dich selbst als Nerd einschätzt, oder? Äh, eigentlich Geek, weil Nerd ja eher so die äh, mathemat mathematisch und wissenschaftlichen sind, aber äh, dadurch, dass ich diesen Unterschied kenne, werde ich wahrscheinlich auch ein Nerd sein, aber eher Geek, würde ich sagen. <lacht> und was würdest du denn deinen Nerd- oder Geek-Faktor von 1 bis 10, wobei 10 das Beste ist, einschätzen? <lacht> <lacht> uh, sagen wir mal sechs. sechs? Sagen wir mal sechs. Okay. Oh, sechs bis sieben. Kommt drauf an, welche Themengebiete. So im, im Comic-Bereich ein bisschen höher, im, im Fernsehserienbereich auch. Uh, aber jetzt so im, im Superheldenbereich zum Beispiel ein bisschen weniger, weil mir das immer zu kompliziert ist, da die ganzen verschiedenen Reihen zu lesen und so. Aber es, es kommt auf das konkrete Themengebiet an. Okay. Dann kannst du dich ja jetzt gleich mal beweisen bei unserem kleinen Nerdquiz. Ich bin gespannt. Ich bin gespannt. Es sind auch TV-Serien dabei. Ja. Okay, gehen wir mal los. In welchem Jahr spielt Stranger Things? Oder in welchem Jahrzehnt? Die 70er? Sind die 80er. Ah. Nächstes. Äh, wie heißt denn die Haupt äh, weibliche Hauptfigur in Rogue One? Ich... Äh, ich ja, 
Ja, passt, passt. Schön. E. Schön, e. Ja. <lacht> ja, ja, was gelten? Ja, so. Ah, ja. Gesehen, gemocht? Ja. ja, hat mir sehr gut gefallen, aber der Name ist mir jetzt, weil die Star Wars Namen immer so sehr kompliziert sind und ich jetzt auch nicht der Star Wars Überfan bin. Ich, ich gucke es gerne an, aber wenn ich es äh, mal gesehen habe, beim nächsten Mal habe ich schon wieder vergessen, worum es ging. Von daher, ja. ja. <lacht> Super. Äh, welches Bier trinkt man denn bei den Simpsons? Äh, Duft Bier. In der Tat. Und wie ist die Schiffsnummer der... Äh, ersten Enterprise? Keine Ahnung. 7791 <lacht> oder so. Nee, keine Ahnung. NX01. Und wie viele Pokémon-Editionen gibt es? Soll ich dir ein paar Zahlen dazu sagen? Äh, sag mir mal ein paar Zahlen dazu. Okay. Sind es 15, sind es 21 oder sind es 30? Also ich kenne die ziemlich alle, aber wie viele das war. Aber jetzt muss gezählt werden, ne? <lacht> Also ich weiß, dass es immer zwei parallel gibt, von daher, weil das die einzige runde Zahl ist, würde ich erst mal 30 sagen, aber... In der Tat sind es 21. Okay, Okay, letzte Frage, eine Tech-Frage. Ich bin so schlecht. <lacht> Wann erschien Windows XP? Äh, 2002? Was? 2001. Oh, okay. Aber du hast dich ja nicht mal ganz so schlecht geschlagen. Ja, war, nicht, war nicht so meine Themengebiete, aber... Gibt auch ein paar nette Sachen für dich. Ja. Hast du noch was zum Schlickern hier? Ach, sehr nett, sehr nett, vielen Dank. Wunderbar. Und äh, falls du was trinken willst, Moment, jetzt muss ich selber etwas kramen. Hier hast du ein bisschen Ahoi-Brause. Sehr schön, sehr schön. Und noch ein besseres zu trinken, das hier. Kennst du das? Nee. Ja, aus Düsseldorf ein Kräuterlikör. Ah, okay. Vielen Dank, ja. vielen Dank. Wo kommst Hat's, du ursprünglich her? Äh, ich komme aus der Gegend von Frankfurt, also aus Hessen. Okay, also geht so weit weg. Also kann, ja. kann man mit dem ICE schneller ja, hinfahren? Das ja, also für, ja, Düsseldorf so zwei Stunden. Zwei Stunden, genau. Ja. ja, cool. Und äh, ihr seid auf jeden Fall auch die beiden Tage hier bei der Con. Äh, ja, genau. Ich habe jetzt hier äh, Tom Bancroft da. Das ist ein bekannter, okay, nicht so super bekannt, aber die Figuren, die er entworfen hat, sind bekannt. Also er hat zum Beispiel bei der König der Löwen den jungen Simba entworfen oder bei äh, Mulan Mushu den Drachen. Dann Pocahontas in Pocahontas oder auch zum Beispiel Jago den Papagei aus Aladdin. Also in den Zeichentrickfilmen hat er das äh, Design von den Figuren gemacht. Und äh, ich habe jetzt von ihm den, seine eigene Comic-Miniserie Opposite Forces, äh, die er vor ein paar Jahren mal gezeichnet hat. Und die ist jetzt bei mir auf Deutsch erschienen. Und die äh, signiert er jetzt gerade hier. Okay, cool. Wunderbar. Sind schon ein paar Leute da gewesen? Äh, ja, ja. War, war schon gut zu tun. Jetzt im Moment ist er beim Essen. Deshalb sitze ich hier gerade auf seinem Platz. <lacht> Aber... Äh, wird noch ein bisschen voller werden nachher, denke ich, wenn er wieder da ist. Und, nö, aber hat gut zu tun gehabt, Deutschland. Ja. Da muss ich jetzt als Fan doch direkt mal fragen, wann ist denn Don das nächste Mal in Deutschland? Äh, Don Rosa, also wir sind jetzt wieder im Herbst mit ihm unterwegs, allerdings nur in Skandinavien und so. Und ich denke mal potenziell nächstes Jahr, wahrscheinlich so nächsten Herbst oder so wieder, also Herbst 2018, denke ich mal. Ist Herbst Dies, immer für ihn am besten? Äh, ja, also im Sommer. Im Sommer verreist er eigentlich gar nicht mehr international, weil es da halt äh, bei ihm zu gutes Wetter ist und da muss er sich halt immer um seinen großen Garten, er hat ja so ein großes Waldanwesen. Und um kümmern. seine Chilis kümmern. Ja, ja genau. Und äh, um seine Hunde und alles Mögliche. Deshalb ist jetzt, also international reist er eigentlich nur noch so zwischen September und März um den Dreh, also die Sommermonate eigentlich gar nicht. Da ist er jetzt nur bei so Wochenend -Amer amerikanischen Korps in den USA unterwegs. Alles klar, dann danke, dass du mitgemacht hast. Gerne, ja, gerne, auch wenn ich sehr schlecht war, aber ja, relativ. Es geht. Du warst aber. teilweise nah dran. Also. Ja. <lacht> dann noch viel Spaß hier auf der Kopf. Gleichfalls, danke. Und man sieht sich. Genau, bis dahin. Hi, who are you? Hi, I am Sarah Louise Madison and I play the Weeping Angel and Time Zombie on Doctor Who. So you're one of the scariest monsters alive. Thank you. <lacht> You look much more beautiful than a Weeping Angel. Oh, thank you. It, it takes longer to make me look like this than it does to make me look like a Weeping Angel. How long does it take? Um, to be the Weeping Angel, I think it takes about three and a half to four hours. And then for the Time Zombie, it's about two and a half hours. How did you get the role? Through my agent. Um, yeah, he just he sent me 
an audition for Doctor Who and I didn't know what it was but he said it was an angel I was kind of hoping that it wasn't the angel because they terrified me when I saw them in Blink oh yeah but then yeah it's now it's just amazing to be an iconic role I'm not so scared of them now I, I, I feel like I understand them better <laughs> <laughs> can you really understand a whooping angel of, yeah of course you can they, they have feelings they have thoughts yeah they're, they're, they're actually really nice <laughs> and it's really sad that they can't look at each other yes exactly I mean it's a lonely life being a weeping angel yeah. you, you never really have any friends but they long for it and I think that's why they act out <laughs> so would you consider yourself a little bit of a nerd? Yes, definitely. In what area? Oh, I just I just love, you know, I love science fiction, all that kind of stuff. I, I collect Doctor Who, especially Weeping Angels now. Okay. I, I got, it, it seems to be every convention I go to, I bring, I bring something back, usually Doctor Who related. Nice. Yeah, yeah I have a Sonic screwdriver myself and a little oh, TARDIS nice. I have on my disc in yeah. the office. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, so let's see. If you're a nerd, then you maybe can answer some of the questions. Oh dear, I didn't know it was a... <laughs> <laughs> let's see, you, you like Star Trek? I have seen one... <laughs> okay, so, very nerdy question. Okay. Uh, what is the name of the interface the computers on the Enterprise D, oh, Star Trek Next no. Generations, are controlled? Oh no, is I it, know that. Is it LCRS? L-C-R-A-R-S? Is it LMRS or is it CSOM? The first one? The first one. Actually, you're right. Yes! Do you know what it stands for? No. <laughs> it's Library Computer Access Retrieval System. There we go. Yeah? Well done. Thank you. <laughs> you read Dragon Ball or seen Dragon Ball, the show? No, no, I haven't. You know what it's about? Yes. I think it's Dragon Ball. I think I know the actor who voices it. Okay. <laughs> So I, sh I should have seen it, yeah. So, um, the Dragon Balls, they can grant a wish if you collect right. all of them. Okay. But how many Dragon Balls are there? Is it one, five or seven? Five. It's actually seven. Oh, no, it's gonna go seven. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on a roleplay convention. Yes. You know what the term LARP stands for? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's medieval, isn't it? To do with medieval... Um, but the actual, uh, the short term, is it limited action role play? Is it low action role play or is it live action role play? Live action role play. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so, you got a lot of questions right. Yay. <laughs> and so you win some stuff. Yay. For I'm example, excited. this one. Oh, I love Smarties. This one and this one. Oh, thank you. And you know this one. <laughs> Why are you laughing? What it's is a very it? German thing. Okay, well, what's really it going to do German to me? Thing. Really German thing. If you like put it in your mouth and you, you just let, let it prickle on your tongue, or you can put it in a drink, yeah. and then it tastes like Ooh. this. But not in a cool bottle. Not okay. in a full butter, then it would explode. Way, yeah. Okay. And? Oh, that's so one. cute. Oh my gosh, that's tiny. It's a herb liquor from Düsseldorf in Germany. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'll try that. Oh, that's a typical Düsseldorf. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for the interview and the little quiz. Thank you for the presents. Yeah. <laughs> Nerdy Sismus. Yes, exactly. Okay. Hello, my name is Sarah Louise Madison from Doctor Who, and this is Nerdy Sismus. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Ja, ist schon okay. Ja. Hi, wer, trink. Ja. Hi, wer seid ihr? Ich bin Ines Kort, ich zeichne Masso Schmieds Tochter im Internet. Ich bin der Mario Bühling, ich zeichne unter anderem Katzenfutter Gelee Spritzer auch im Internet. Und da kann ich ganz sicher davon ausgehen, dass ihr Nerds seid. Aber sowas von. Äh, aber sowas von. Ja. <lacht> <lacht> Denn, dann frage ich doch direkt mal weiter, was denkt ihr denn, was euer Nerdfaktor auf der Stufe 1 bis 10 ist, wobei 1 das Schlechteste ist und 10 das Beste? Ähm, Mit was vergleichen wir uns denn da? Was ist denn eine 10? Ja, euer eigener Standard. Müsst ihr selber entscheiden. Ach so, dann sind wir eine 8,5. 8,5? Beide? Ja, ja, genau ja, ja. so. 8,73. Das ist aber ganz schön viel. Nein. 
wir haben andere, die sich schon höher eingeschätzt haben. Von daher ist es, ist es so ein bisschen so eine persönliche Skala. Ne? Ja, so, okay. ja. Was sind denn eure Spezialgebiete? Ähm, Herr der Ringe, äh, drittes Zeitalter. Also Tolkien, drittes Zeitalter, so ungefähr. Ja, alles, was mit Raumschiffen zu tun hat. Okay. Dann lasse ich euch sofort mal gegeneinander antreten, nein! denn ich habe noch ein paar Fragen. Oh nein! Davon hat uns keiner was gesagt. <lacht> Durchgemischt. Wer zuerst antwortet, äh, kriegt einen Punkt oh und so weiter und so fort. Ja. Schauen wir mal. Also, ich, wir haben keinen, nicht, nicht wirklich einen Buzzer, also schreit einfach aus, wenn ihr es wisst. Mhm. Nenn mir die drei Regeln zur äh, ordentlichen Gremlin-Pflege. Äh, Licht nach Mitternacht füttern, kein Licht, kein Wasser. In der Tat. Welchen militärischen Rang hat Taken im Imperium inne? Commander. Grand Morph. Ach, ja, Grand Morph Taken. Ja, Grand Morph Taken. Genau. Wie heißt der Erzfeind von Sherlock Holmes? Erzfeind? Ja. Moriarty. Äh, ja, Professor Moriarty. Oh, Entschuldigung, du Professor warst zuerst, Moriarty. Warst der kennt man, ich sag immer den Nachzeiger. Ja. Okay, das muss jetzt wie aus der Pistole geschossen bekommen. Mhm. Welches Bier trinkt man bei den Simpsons? Duff, glaube ich. Ja. Duff, Duff. Duff, ja, ja. Duff. ja. Der hätte ich gleichzeitig. Was ist eine Hypotenuse? Oh, ist das, 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 also du hast äh, ein Dreieck. Das, und genau, du hast ein Dreieck, Mitte ein gleichschenkliges Dreieck. Und dann ist das die... Oh, nee, das ist irgendeine Gegenüberliegende. Wir sind ja Nerds und keine Geeks, ne? das ist ja, ja der feine Unterschied. Gott, wir Sie können die, die Wissenschaftssachen besser Wir sind keine Wissenschaftler. Nee, wir ist sind irgendwas in einem Dreieck, eine der... So eine, der, der, der so eine Tangente der. in irgendeinem Dreieck. <lacht> <lacht> Irgendwo so mittendurch. Ja, genau. Ja. Oder war es die längste von einem Gleichschenkel? Ja, irgendwie so, Irgend so oder? Was? Das war mal eine Kooperationsantwort, denn es ist in der Tat die längste Seite in einem rechtwinkligen Dreieck. Ah, ah ja. ja, wir wussten wir. Wir ja, mussten genau, uns nur genau ranarbeiten. Das, das, das. das. Hm? Wir können nur quadratische Panels. Wir können, <lacht> können rund können wir nicht, dreieckig können wir nicht. Wer ist denn der Originalzeichner von den Asterix Comics? Ich kann die französischen Namen alle nicht. Genau, wer ist der? Also der so ist und Guccini und wie auch immer die ausgesprochen werden. Und einer davon ist der Autor und der andere ist der Zeichner. Okay. Genau. Ich krieg's Haben nicht auf Reihe. Ja, und der so ist richtig. Oh, der so. Okay, gut. Eine Schätzfrage. Vielleicht wisst ihr es auch direkt so. Wie viele Pokémon-Editionen gibt es? Editionen? Ja. Oh Gott. Rot, Blau, Gold, Silber, Mond, Sonne. Oh Gott, ich weiß es nicht. Zwölf. 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 Ja. Ich gebe euch mal was zum Schätzen. Entweder 15. 21 oder sogar 30? 21. Goldene Mitte ist es. 21, gut, sehr gut. War aber auch nur gut geraten. Mhm. Ja. Und nochmal eine Technikfrage im Geek-Bereich. Wann erschien Windows XP? XP, oh Gott. Also es gab 95, dann gab es 2000, also sage ich mal so 2002. Knapp vorbei, 2001. Ah. Aha, schön, schön. Ihr habt euch aber einigermaßen gut geschlagen. Vielen Dank. Was denn für eine 8,5? Für eine 8,5? Ich weiß nicht. Da haben wir schon bessere Antworten. Nein. <lacht> die, die, die Hypotenuse war es. Die Hypotenuse die war hat uns unser Fallstrick im Dreieck. Unser aber wenn ihr selber immer noch sagt, ihr seid eine 8,5. Perfekt. Super. Ach, das für uns war das eine 8,5. Ja. Für uns war es eine 10. Aber <lacht> Damit ihr auch da gut drauf feiern könnt, kriegt ihr jeder oh. so ein schönes Dingelchen. Oh, medizinische oh. Getränke. Genau, Medizin. Das ist am Sonntag immer sehr praktisch. Ja. Das ja. braucht man gegen Kopfschmerzen. Ja, vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Und? Ich es gibt noch mehr. Ich oh noch Gott, das. Jetzt. Wenn ihr das einmal für mich halten könntet. Ja. Na gut. Ich halte. Genau. Dann Mach kann ich mal diesen Löschen davor. <lacht> das solltet ihr vielleicht nicht in den Kinefitch reinpacken. Oh. Ah, oh. Herrlich. Vielen Dank. Dafür hat es sich schon gelohnt. Ja. Und? Also eine ganze Mahlzeit. Gibt's genau, eigentlich. Zu essen. Und damit oh ihr. Gott, und ah, ja, vielen herzlichen Dank. Ja, vielen das Dank. ist eine ganze Konmahlzeit. Genau. <lacht> das sind zwei Getränke Kon und Essen. <lacht> Wirklich. Also dann war schon deshalb die Kon für euch erfolgreich. Für uns ja, auf jeden Fall. Ich kann mich nicht beklagen. Genau. Ja. Und sonst in anderem Rahmen auch. Ja, 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 ja. definitiv. Echt schöne Kon. Ja. Es ist Ihr angenehm, man trifft Leute, die man gerne wieder treffen möchte und das ist eigentlich so das Schönste daran. Ja. Ihr seid noch den ganzen Tag da? Ja. Wir sind den ganzen Tag hier. Und abends mit Beleuchtung. Wunderbar. Dann wünsche ich euch noch viel Erfolg. Dankeschön. Ihr auch. Und man sieht ja. sich. Bis Tschüss. Dann. Ciao. Tschüss. Hello, who are you? Hello, I'm Bill Hargreaves. I made a few of the droids for the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Nice. And you're also doing a lot of stuff for other movies, like The Golden Compass? Um, I've done one or two other movies. I did Alien, uh, 
uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, American Wealth in London, like I say, Golden Compass, Gladiator, um, When Tomorrow Comes, Killing Me Softly, quite a few nice little films. Yeah. So what do you consider yourself a little bit of a nerd? Am I a bit of a nerd? I'm a total nerd, yeah. yeah. Just bad memory nerd. <laughs> In, uh, more in science fiction and movies or other areas also? I, I love science fiction, but anything fantasy or out of this world or different, like um, hobbits and dragons and yeah, anything yeah. fantasy. What, what's fantasy. your personal favorite? Uh, what, the genre, sci-fi or fantasy? Um, probably sci-fi, yeah. 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 So you maybe don't have any problems answering a few questions or no questions? Well, I'll have lots of problems, but I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. The original Star Wars movie came out in 1977. Yeah. Um, but a few years later, the subtitle A New Hope was added in the episode number. Yeah. You know what year it was? What, it was called A New Hope? Um, no, I don't. I guess 82, but I still call it Star Wars. Quite close, 81. Ah, there you go. Okay. And uh, also Star Wars concerned, what is the color of Luke Skywalker's lightsaber in Empire Strikes Back? Blue? That's right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I must be paying attention. And in the end, can you tell the most famous quote from Yoda in Empire Strikes Back? The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, there is no try, just do, or something like that. Do or do not, there is Ah, oh, that's it, yeah. So, you, you've done pretty well. Oh, good, thank you. And in the end, you win something. Ah, fantastic. And will you win some Smarties? Oh, Merry Christmas to me. Yes. Uh, oh, fantastic. A kilogram. Ah, well, I don't drink, but I know someone who will. Okay. It's a famous Düsseldorf liquor. Yeah. And it tastes good, so you can give it to someone who that actually drinks. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interview. More than welcome. I am Bill Hargreaves, and you're listening to Der Nerdy Dismas on the internet. Hey, we're back with... Ian BT, Sir Maron Trant himself. Hi, how you doing? Nice to see you again. Ah, oh, you too. It was a pleasure last time, it and it's so nice to see you again. Good fun. It's brilliant. I absolutely love coming to Germany. I think everybody's getting a little sick of me now because I've been to everywhere. But I never get tired of coming to Germany. It's such a fantastic place. So how many cons in Germany have you been to the last year? Oh, well, in the last two years, I must have been to at least five, maybe six. Okay. So I got about. Which con is the best? <laughs> Um, that is a very difficult one to answer. Uh, I remember, however, doing uh, the Ring Con in Bonn, which wasn't so much a con as a big party over the weekend in a hotel. It was good fun. Uh, but they all are. I mean, they really are. And you know, you actually bump into familiar faces that you've seen at other yeah. cons, and you know, it's almost like you're making friends. And it's really pleasant. Amazing. Can you remember any names of the other people you've seen? You've seen any fans before here? That oh yes, I mean Fabian I've seen before, Sasha, a couple of the girls that I met at SaberCon in München Gladbach before Christmas. Uh, yeah, and they're very nice because they always come up and reintroduce themselves and yeah. remind me where I've seen them before since I'm old and don't have a very good memory. And finally you're on a con in summer with very nice temperatures. It's too, too hot. beautiful. Not at all. Not at all. My wife loves the uh, summer sunshine. She would live here tomorrow. So yeah. it's absolutely beautiful here. And it's a beautiful day. We've been outside having some of that wonderful German beer and some bratwurst. So we've had a great time today. <laughs> awesome. And are you excited for Game of Thrones Season 7? I cannot wait. I yeah. really cannot wait. I watched the trailer uh, when it first came out. One of the 35 million people to watch it on the first day. And it looks absolutely stunning. It gets better every season, and I see no reason why season seven yeah. won't be the best one yet. I guess so, but we only have seven episodes right now for this one. That's right. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, there's seven episodes this year, season seven, and then there will be six episodes in season eight, and that will finish the story. Uh, but uh, its uh, I'll be sorry to see it finished. You because have every year it gets for no, the no, no. Every time I think of a theory, it's always proved wrong within one episode. So I've actually um, somebody's rambling in the corner. I think it's Roger Ashton Griffiths. I don't think he's taking his tablets today. So who knows? So don't listen to this whole rambling on here. Yes. What? 
What's your theories for uh, the end of Game of Thrones? The end of Game of Thrones, it will stop. It yes. will stop, yes. Very good. My theory was it isn't half as good since I died, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. Every time I think I've got it figured out, they changed the game. So Who are you rooting for? I have no idea. I'm rooting... Well, my favorite character is Cersei Lannister. Okay. Always was. So, you know, come on, Cersei. Will she, <laughs> will she see the end of the series? I don't think so. <laughs> so, uh, we got another few nerd questions for you. Okay. You can win stuff again. Okay. Did you enjoy the liquor last Very time? Very much. Okay. So, specific Game of Thrones questions I prepared just for you. Good. Who was burned on Drogo's funeral pyre? What is the name of the character that was burned on Drogo's funeral pyre? Oh, that fire? witch, that horrible, rotten, nasty witch, uh, yes. uh, or something like that? No, no. No, you so got me. Miri must do her. Miri must do her. Well, yeah. it wasn't too far away. Area Zui. Yeah. Miri must do her. Um, we were close. <laughs> can you name uh, the dragons of uh, Aegon the Conqueror? No. No. It's Balerion the Black Threat. Yes. It's uh, Maraxxus and yes. Vagar. Yes. Yeah. And that was in the series, I do remember, yes. yes. Okay, cool. And the incredible uh, composer for Game of Thrones is uh, Ramin Javadi. Ramin Javadi, yeah. He's now, if you'd asked me that, I would have got that <laughs> right. <laughs> He's actually from Germany. He's from uh, Duisburg. Really? He's uh, uh, quite close to here. Excellent. And do you know, uh, before he started uh, working, composing himself, for which composer did he work for? Hmm. Is it? I have three names for you. Ah, if you can get good. it. A multiple choice question. <laughs> is it Hans Zimmer? Is it John Williams? Or is this, is it James Horner? I believe it was Hans Zimmer. That's exactly right. I got one right. Yeah. I'm so pleased. And in the end, I think this is the easiest for you. Hmm? What is the real surname? So the real name of Brienne. Ah, her real name is. Uh, I'm only joking. Gwendolyn Christie. The gorgeous, <laughs> beautiful, incomparable, wonderful, beautiful, beautiful Gwendolyn Christie. Exactly. I think this was, was quite easy for you. That right? one was a good one. That one was a good question. <laughs> I also know Peter Dinklage as well. I really want to meet him. I really want to talk to He's him. He's a great guy. You'll love him. You'll really enjoy him. He's great fun. So, I got some stuff for you. Again. Good. So this time, you know oh. this, this year? And this is? This is like a powder that you can put in your drink. Oh. And it's very sweet. Oh. But most of the German kids, they put it like in their mouths and ah. then crinkle. Oh, crinkle candy. Yes. Good. Yeah, we got that. I know what that is. Good. I used to love that as a kid. This one, you're probably getting those. <laughs> I'm on a dad. And this one? These are my kids. And again, if you enjoyed it. There's no way you're getting this one. This is mine. <laughs> this is mine. Have you drunk it yet? Oh, I'm going to drink mine now. Okay. Oh, very good. So what con will we see you next in Germany? Oh, I have no idea. You have no idea? I have no idea whatsoever, So, but I hope to be back as soon as I possibly can. Love the place. It's always nice meeting you. Really awesome. Thank you very much. Nice so meeting you too again. Enjoy the con again. Well, indeed. Here all day today. Here all day tomorrow. Come and say hi. I will. All right. So, I know you have done it before. You said, like, hello to our Nerdy Sismos viewers. Maybe you have another tagline for us, so just from your creative head. Here is Sir Meryn Trant of Game of Thrones. So, out. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome, Jim. <laughs> hey, who are you? I'm Roger Ashton Griffiths. I'm known for playing Mace Tyrell in Game of Thrones. In the last season, you were... Spoiler! I might not be in the next season, let's you... put it that way. You might come back as a White Walker. I think I was annihilated rather than killed. I was evaporated. It's very hard to come back from. Who knows? In that world, anything's possible. Would you consider yourself a little bit of a nerd or a geek? No. Basically. Not in any area? I, one or two areas, but not areas that probably concern us here today. Okay, we're doing a little nerd quiz with you. I have some nerd questions for you. Go ahead. Game of Thrones specific. Sure. Maybe you can answer them. Well, I, I might well embarrass myself, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> okay, the first question. What's the title of Pycelle and the Red Keep? 
I sell in yes. the Red Keep. Is, What's he's, he? he's a Grand Meister, isn't he? That's exactly right. Oh, there we go then. Yeah. And do you know which band made a cameo appearance at the Purple Wedding? Yes, because I was there. It's an Icelandic band called Ziggo Ross. Yes. I couldn't really pronounce it. I've never heard of them before. I've never seen them since. You like them? They weren't really doing their thing. They were doing the Game of Thrones thing, so I couldn't really say. I don't, I don't know what they do. <laughs> and can you tell me how many actors played the mountain on Game of Thrones? This is awful. I'm beginning to look like a nerd, but I can answer that. It was three. Yeah. Um, but I, I refute my nerd status, but anyway, <laughs> this is going badly. I, I'm a nerd, it turns out. Can, can, can you name them? Um, Haftor, I know because I work with him. No, I don't know the other two. It's Conan Stevens. It's Ian White. And yeah, it's a Bjornsson. I don't know. Uh, do you know? Haftor Bjornsson. Haftor yeah. Bjornsson. Yeah. Okay. Well, I went out for dinner with Haftor and Anton Lesser, who plays um, the other Grand Meister, who's a very small man. Okay. So, and I was out with the biggest man in the world and the smallest man in the world. Uh, and I was sort of handsomely in the middle. So it must have felt very weird, right? Yeah, I felt like the mediator. He's really, if you if you look at him in your real, real life, he's really like a mountain, Oh, no, right? he really is. He's enormous. Yeah. And, and also, he's in very good shape as well. He had a stand-in. There was a man with some similar sort of height who was not in good shape, and he was a bit blobby. Okay. Papto is all muscle. I mean, he is remarkable. Yeah. He really is a man mountain. So nice. Yeah, so uh, you could answer some of our questions, or all of them, better to say. So you win something from us? Oh, jolly good. Let me just check it. Well, I like presents. Dear listener, my interviewer is now rummaging around in his bag seeking <laughs> what's going to be my present. I'm here in my present, and it is a small box. And when I say small, it's a very small box of Smarties and an equally small Ritter Sports piece of chocolate. Nonetheless, half an hour ago, I didn't have these. Now I do, so I'm very grateful. And you get this thing. Ah. Okay, so I've got the Kileptisch, which is... A herb liquor. A herb liquor. <laughs> yes. Jolly good. Yeah. I, today I'm the winner. Yeah. You drink alcohol? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it, is, it has been known, yes. Yeah. I will give that a go. Thank you very so, much. So the next season, will you watch Game of Thrones? I will watch some of it. I, I don't have a policy on this. I, I don't have Sky, so I can't get it. Okay. But sometimes I see it with my neighbor. But don't, not all the time. Don't you get like copies from the peer producers? No, 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 no. No, once you're dead, you're out. Okay. That's it. You're no longer part of the team. No secrets anymore. You don't know what's going to happen. Not a clue. Not I mean, a clue. Seriously, not a clue. No you, idea. You stay in contact with the other actors? Some of them. But I mean, some of them were friends anyway. Yeah. Lena Headey and I worked together before uh, Charlie Dance years ago. Uh, Ian BT and Michael Henry and Dan have become friends. Yeah, we kind of say it. So no one else is in it. Yeah. So they're all dead. So, it's not so but almost all the British actors, actors have been in Game of Thrones right now, right? <laughs> well, there's a few that have not, and most of those want to be in it. So, thank you very much for taking part in our little nerd quiz. You're very welcome. Jesus, you go on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ian Beatty in the, the background. Most interview you've ever done. <laughs> Okay, I'm going out. I, hi, I have been Roger Ashton Griffiths, known as Mace Tyrell in Game of Thrones, and you have been listening to Nerd Isibus. Feeling Dank. Thank you very much. Hi, who are you? I'm Ian McElhenney, uh, and I'm meeting you here today in a very sunny Cologne, because we're at the role play uh, conference here. Uh, the weather's beautiful, we're having a lovely time, it's been very busy. Uh, in case most people don't have a clue who I am, I played Barristan Selby in Game of Thrones and General Dodonna in the recent Rogue One uh, from Star Wars. So two major franchises. Two major franchises, so I'm very happy about that because it does no harm to be part of a major franchise. Yeah, but you've been uh, quite some time in the business and enjoyed yourself in no, the uh, Yes, I, I, I've, I've been in a long time, managed to stay busy, which is good. Probably longer than I care to remember, but there you go, that's, that's life. I can do nothing about that, I'm just getting older and that's that. But most recently, most people will recognize you from Sir Barristan Selmy on Game of Thrones. Yes, yes, I would say that's inevitably the thing for which, you know, I will be best known for the present, anyway. You know. And did you enjoy your stay on the show? 
I love doing it. I would love to have stayed longer. I, unfortunately for me, had read the books and therefore assumed that I would be in it for longer. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, television it kind of takes its own journey and at a certain point my time was up and that was that. I don't deny at the time I was disappointed, but uh, life goes on and I'm doing other things now, so that's that, I'm quite happy. You know? So you actually read the books because, uh, for example, Ian Bitty, he said he won't read them until the last yeah. um, ones come out. I No, I read them probably more by accident than by design. Somebody gave me book one and for a while I didn't think I was interested in reading it. Then I started reading it and I enjoyed it so much that I thought, well, I'm going to carry on and read the rest, and I did. And then by the time I read book five, I thought, this is great, I'm still alive, I'm still going at this series. And unfortunately, I chose to believe that. <laughs> it was not a wise idea. You know? Don't assume anything for Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, that's the bottom line. If, as soon as you assume something, you know, you will be a loser. You know? And would you consider yourself a little yeah, bit of a nerd? No, I truthfully, I don't believe I am. I think you'll find when you ask me some nerdy questions that I'm totally useless, but we shall find out. But do you have a specific area where you uh, know a lot of stuff about? I would have no specific area where that is true. I've got a, I've got a decent general knowledge. So you're all around talent. Uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's say that. Why not? That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. So let's see, I have some multiple choice questions for you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can answer them. Actually, do you know, that's not Game of Thrones, but another big franchise you were in, Star Wars. On how many Star Wars films did George Lucas actually direct? Is it all six of them? Or all seven of them, actually, now? All the, fir all the first three only? Or is it four films? You know, now you're really troubling me. I have a feeling that it's six. Actually, it's only four. So he did the first original three. No, he only did the first one, actually. The first one, the uh, episode and then, four. And then the three prequels. Yes, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Who, who did two and three then? Do you know? Actually, no. Yeah. If somebody said the names but, to me, I probably would. But it wasn't George Lucas. It wasn't George Lucas. Yeah. You know something about, about games, probably video games? I. I've never played a video game because I'm useless with all those buttons and um, I've, I've watched my children and my grandchildren doing it and it's all, as my mother-in-law would have said, above my rollers. I, I don't understand. Okay. You know? So let's keep it to Game of Thrones. When aired Game of Thrones for the first time in 2010, 2011 or 2012? 2010 was the number one. 2011, actually. Well, we made it in 2010. You made it 10. It aired the first it, it episode. It aired in 2011. On, yeah, April we, 17th. Yeah, that's why I said 10 because yeah. we aired. We made it in 2010. Yeah. So and the last question: How many actors actually played the mountain in Game of Thrones? Well, 100%. I'm not sure. I know that I certainly know of three. If there's more, I don't know. So it would, it was, this would be my answer: two, three, or four? I would say three. Three. That's exactly right. Okay. Very good. So. I wasn't too bad. You, you still get stuff for free. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I see you enjoy a little bit of, ca of candy now, so you get this. Oh, lovely. And? I don't know if you drink alcohol, but if you drink alcohol, you get this one. Oh, I certainly drink that. Yeah. It's a herb liquor from right, Dusseldorf. Right, right, look here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I enjoy that. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so thanks for the interview. Thank you very much. Nerdy Sismus. Hello there. I'm Ian McElhinney. I play Sir Barrison Selby in Game of Thrones. And you are listening to me on Nerdy Sismus. Thank you very much. Take Have care. a nice convention. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, hello. Who are you? I, I'm Ian Hanmore from Game of Thrones. Buy it free. Pirate 3, indeed. You like playing the role? I loved playing the role. It was a bit short, though, right? It was far too short. Far too short. <laughs> and would you consider yourself a little bit of a nerd? I would consider myself a medium bit of a nerd. In what areas? Um, I'm kind of OCD on tidiness. Okay. Uh, musically, I'm a bit of a nerd. Oh, what uh, kind of music? 
any kind of music. Kind Main, of music. No, mainly, mainly rock music. And a bit of a nerd, perhaps, with mechanical, scientific type things. I'm interested in that. And politics. Well, okay. Get me started on politics. My questions Brexit. will be a little bit in the in the science fiction or in Game of Thrones area. All right. Okay. Maybe you can get it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let, okay. Let's see it. Can you tell what the cities of Slaver's Bay are in Game of Thrones? I cannot. You probably heard them, though. That is Marine Astapor and Yunkai. I'm afraid I haven't heard of them. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Yeah, another more easier Game of Thrones question. Thank you. What is the sigil of House Stark? Is it um, a Coke bottle? Uh, I, no. No? no I don't know. It's a dire wolf. Oh! It's a dire wolf, yes. <laughs> Maybe more in the area of Star Wars. At least we are on a Star Wars convention here. I see, so. yes, yes. So. so can you tell when the original Star Wars came out? What year? I believe it was 1977. That's right. One out of three, not bad. It's not bad, is not it? Not bad. No. And you want something, a little bit. Mom. Mom. And a few other candies. Ah. So, um, thank you for playing. It was fun. With pleasure. You like the uh, con so far, the convention the so far? The con's been great. Been, I've been very well taken care of. I'm very happy. Okay, nice. Hello, I'm Ian Hanmore, and you're listening to Nerdicismus. Yes. Very nice, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. It's been a genuine pleasure. Yes, for me too. Short and sweet. Thank Short you. and sweet. Und das war's auch schon wieder mit den Nerd Quizzes, die ich im letzten Jahr mit diversen Personen geführt habe. Es war immer wieder sehr spaßig, mit manchen konnte man ein bisschen mehr klüngeln, mit manchen etwas weniger, hat man dann in dem Fall gemerkt, wenn ich direkt in die Fragen eingestiegen bin oder wenn einfach wenig Zeit da war. Aber insgesamt waren es alle sehr nette Leute und äh, sehr spaßige Angelegenheiten. Und wann kann man schon mal sagen, dass man sich ähm, so lange mit irgendeinem Promi mal richtig unterhalten kann? Mal schauen, wie es im nächsten Jahr so läuft, ob ich wieder ein paar mehr Game of Thrones Leute treffe, das wäre natürlich cool. Irgendwann kann ich mein Quartett voll machen mit allen Game of Thrones Darstellern. Und wie am Anfang der Episode schon erklärt, haben wir ja noch eine weitere Interview Episode für euch, diesmal ein exklusives Interview mit Ian Beatty dem Marin Trent und den ich zum dritten Mal auf der Fantastica in Oberhausen getroffen habe, wo er einen Schaukampf Schauschwertkampf-Workshop, schweres Wort, äh, gemacht hat, der wirklich ein Riesenspaß war und wo ich am Ende mit ihm ein kleines Videointerview geführt habe. Das kriegt ihr dann demnächst bei uns und ich hoffe, euch hat diese Episode gefallen. Und wenn euch diese Episode gefallen hat, dann hinterlasst uns doch einen Kommentar oder eine Bewertung in unserem Beitrag auf der Webseite oder in unseren Social-Media-Kanälen. Und wir würden uns natürlich auch riesig freuen, wenn ihr das Ganze fleißig teilt und weiter verbreitet. Ja, wir hören uns dann demnächst wieder, wieder in voller Besetzung, entweder mit Chris oder mit Anja oder mit Chris und Anja, wieder mit irgendwelchen Gästen. Damit sage ich erstmal Tschüss für heute, bis zum nächsten Mal. Ich bin Nerdizist Michael und wir hören uns. Tschüss.